What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. Today, we're gonna look at the perfect moose. So, the perfect moose is an automatic milk steamer that just won the best new product in commercial coffee preparation and serving equipment down at SCA in New Orleans. Um, it was all, it was virtual of course, but um, yeah, so it's a brand new, fresh off the press, uh, award-winning machine uh, that I'm going to take a look at today. So obviously, first and foremost, this is a type of like robotics, right? This is an automated piece of equipment. So this is not geared towards home baristas, it's geared more towards like high volume cafes. So the idea with this is to prepare the perfect amount of milk, the perfect foam, the perfect texture without having to use your hands. And today we're going to put that to the test. Uh, to, just to begin the video, they did send me this, but they are not dictating my review. I'm not sending them the video before you're seeing it. This is going to be raw. What I'm showing you is what it's going to be, and I'm going to do things to where you can draw your own conclusions as opposed to having to hear me by doing a little man versus machine type action here, and you'll be able to see the results. But first, let's go ahead and kind of like take a look at what this thing does. So, first of all, we obviously have the steam wand that is mounted on here, and it's slightly askew at an angle. And what this allows is for once it, uh, it enters the milk, it is going to allow for that whirl to happen. If it were straight up and down, it would not be uh, able to pr uh, provide that whirl. So it's slightly askew and at an angle. It's not quite to my halfway and a quarter that I teach on uh, my uh, milk steaming video, which boom is linked right at the top, but it's almost there. Then what you also have here is a very specific milk pitcher itself that has this little like microchip type thing on the bottom of it. Now what this does is it communicates to the machine through this base. So each milk pitcher that you have, and you'll get a few when you buy the perfect mousse. Let's get a few of these out. Each of these have their own thing on the bottom. So what you can do is you can dial in each pitcher to a certain thickness, to a certain temperature, and so that you can keep alternative milks separate from dairy, right? So. You have the capability, once you're in the screen, of choosing the foam thickness and the temperature that the milk is going to come off at. Now you're asking, well, how does this machine know what the temperature is, what the foam thickness is, etc.? Well, they have a few things in place to help it sense that. First of all, this base right here has a scale on it that needs to calibrate every time you turn it on. And it has three concentric circles that correlate to the sizes of these three sized pitchers. So by sensing the size of the pitcher and the weight of how much liquid is inside of the pitcher itself, it knows how deep to put the wand and it, can, it knows how much, based off of the weight, it can uh, do calculations to figure out the volume and it knows how much it needs to move in order to uh, aerate the perfect amount or supposedly the perfect amount for whatever foam level you set it at. In addition, it has this little guy right here, which is an infrared sensor that can tell what temperature it is going through these pitchers. So, Obviously, you have to use these mode of pitchers that they give you in order for this to work at all. You have to use what they're giving because it's, it's integrated into their system. Otherwise, you throw a normal pitcher on there, it's not even going to go. Now, a few things that this does is if it does not have the adequate amount of milk that, it, that, that they have figured out to get the proper texture, it won't start unless you add more milk. And if it's not a cooled temperature, it will warn you that you need colder milk in there, but that you can ignore and bypass. So, that's kind of what's going on here. Now, there are two ways to set this machine up. One, you can do what I've done, which is a temporary solution. You can plug it in, plug, it, uh, plug a, a tube onto your steam wand itself. Now, it needs to be a commercial machine, home machines. There's not enough steam power in order to power this. But you can plug it onto the steam wand itself, and this is kind of a temporary way to set this up. Now, there's a more permanent way where you can actually tap into the steam boiler itself, but that is a much more intensive process. And since right now we're in Onyx Coffee Lab's lab, I wasn't going to do that. Anyway, uh, it's very simple to plug up if you're doing the temporary solution. It took me about 10 minutes of just snipping some, uh, snipping some pipes or some cords and plugging away and tightening things. Then you just turn on the steam wand, turn on the machine, it automatically calibrates, you're good to go. Then you're just making your recipes for the milk. So the way that you're going to program a pitcher, you put it on empty and you hold down the pitcher right here. And then it shows to adjust recipe, right? So you're programming this specific pitcher, that little microchip on the bottom that I was referring to, hit adjust recipe, and then you can scroll down all the way to thinnest, up to thickest. So we'll go down to like here or so. This is really nice for a lot of when it's this thin. Click next, and then you have the ability from the standard temperature, which is 64 degrees Celsius. Let me go to zero. 
So adding zero degrees, you're gonna steam at 64 Celsius. You can go down all the way to negative eight and up to positive eight, which means you can go down to 56 or you can go up to 74, uh, 72, I'm sorry. So we're just gonna go down, we'll just, uh, whatever, we'll go up to uh, the 72. And then you cl click this little button right here, which is save. And now this picture has been saved to that program. So this specific picture, you can make a mark, whatever it is, this is saved to that program. If you wanna change it, of course, put it on, hold down the button while it's empty, and now we're back. Just click adjust recipe, finished. We can just go back down here, easy. Easy as, easy as pie. Take it off and now that one's saved. Then you take another one, same thing. You just put this on, hold the picture down, and you continue to go. All of that aside, let's go ahead and do a little man burst machine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these pictures and I'm gonna go with dairy first. But we're gonna steam, we're gonna do a head-to-head -head with dairy and a head-to-head -head with an alternative beverage. Today I'll be using the milk from Rebel Kitchen, from uh, Miracle Kitchen, Rebel Kitchen, depending where you're at in the world. Uh, this is the, the stuff that James Hoffman helped to produce. And uh, yeah, we're gonna check that out. We're gonna do a little side-by-side -side where I steam one on here, one myself, and we're gonna do it with just some local dairy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get those started and then we'll cut straight to the pour. So this is the first, this is where I steam the milk. I'm pouring into my own pitcher. All right, so this is steamed by man. This is steamed by man. All right, so there we have the first where I steamed it. Now we're gonna see what it's like when the perfect moose steams it. And now we have from the Perfect Moose machine. All right. So there we have man versus machine. You can kind of take a look at that. So this is the one that I steamed. This is the one where I did it on the frother. I probably put the foam setting a little too thin, so I'm gonna go back and change that real quick for, we'll do one more test, dairy versus dairy, just because one-offs are never sufficient. All right. So we got man first, right here. All right, so we got man. And now we got machine. All right, so as you see here, we have very similar textures going on. The biggest difference here is this shot just pulled a lot better. <laughs> That's why it's so much darker. But if you look really closely, you'll see that both of them, we'll do the shake test just to. All right, and then this, which is one I did. All right. So very good texture. This, again, the milk was sitting out here as well because I steamed them both same time, so it was a little more clumpy. But if you look really closely, they're both very tight textures, very tight microfoam. So we'll go ahead and take a spoon and push it back so you can kind of see what we're working with here. So a little separated, but they're both kind of sitting there. But this one, this one might be a little bit more integrated but very comparable textures there. Now, of course, you can go a lot thicker. I went on one of the more thin settings so I could show with latte art, but you can obviously go a lot thicker on these. But there they are. All right, so now we've got the 
Now we're going to be pouring the barista milk. We're going to see how this stacks up. This one is from the machine. All right, so that is with the barista milk. All right, so this is the one that I steamed. All right, so there you have it. This is the perfect mousse, and this is the one that I hand steamed. Again, there were shot differences, obviously. I'm just quickly pulling some shots. But outside of that, the texture is very similar. We'll do the shake test. This is the one that I steamed. All right. This is the one from the mousse. So there you go. All right. So we got the testing out of the way. It's very obvious that this is more than capable of making fantastic latte art. Now the question is, what type of cafe does this need? Because obviously I'm able to do the same with my hands. Is there really a speed benefit to it? Is there a multitasking benefit to it? Is this necessary in low volume, high volume cafes? What is the target audience for this, the target market? Well, what I can see, because how simple this is to fill, is I can see this being a huge benefit in busy cafes where you're having one barista try to do everything. So with all these different pitchers that you can program, it's very easy to line them up set it on there, get it going, especially if you have cold milk. I have to ignore that because it's not cold. And then getting the, pit, the, the espresso set up like this. And you'll have a little drink ready in no time. Like so. So this, is gonna, this can greatly affect your bar flow, right? You're able to do a lot more, you're able to do a lot more multitasking. You can have people bar, uh, focusing on espresso and having someone else just line pitchers up. So you can just set it on, pull it off, wipe, go. Set it, pull, wipe, go. So it's gonna really help increase your efficiency. Now, if you're not a high volume cafe, to be honest, I don't really see this as having a, uh, having a place unless you're just, uh, unless you have a high turnover of baristas and it's hard to teach everyone to steam milk. But if you have someone that's going to be dedicated and is able to take, you know, a few hours to learn how to steam milk, which again, you can check out my milk steaming tutorial for, I don't really know how necessary this is. Just where does that volume start where this would be necessary is the question. Does it do its job? Absolutely. As we have seen throughout, it's been able to stand up against my own steaming, which is quite, quite incredible. So I'm a big fan of the convenience of it. I can see that being very beneficial for a lot of cafes who, are tr who have uh, less staffing and higher volume that maybe they want one, one barista to be able to maintain the bar flow throughout the day. You can have one automatically steaming, another one going at the same time. So the verdict, my verdict on this, I think this is an incredible piece of machinery. I think it does its job, and I think that the technology behind this is quite incredible. The fact that you can dictate the different foam levels. So for the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the foam level really high, and we're going to see what that foam looks like if someone is wanting, say, a traditional style cappuccino. So we're going to do that as the last, as the last bit. All right. So here we have it at the thickest setting. We're going to go ahead and take a look at how this is. All right. All right, so there's that. All right, so there we have it. 
That's the perfect mousse. This is what just won that SCA award. Uh, it could be something that's great for your cafe if you have a little cafe that struggles with, with volume. Um, something to take in consideration. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if you enjoy things like this, you know, please, please hit that subscribe button, the like button below. Uh, hate to pander, but it's the, the only way to really grow. There's a direct correlation from when I say that and how many of you actually are doing it. Um, Anyway, appreciate it. Thank you for watching this. I have a Patreon in the caption below that if you're interested in helping me make more videos like this in the future, go ahead and uh, go check that out for a bit. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching, and until next time, cheers.